All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome. This is a very special episode of the 9x9. Everett and I are together live in Austin, as you've seen some of our coverage from this NCAA men's event. Uh, one of the teams here this weekend is Stanford, and we are pleased to be joined by a very esteemed Stanford alum, all the way from Kędrzejczyk Kozle in Poland, um, reigning champion of the CEV Champions League back after helping us preview the season. Now we're back to preview the final week of the Champions League fourth round. Mr. Eric Shoji, welcome back to the show. Thanks, guys. I'm excited. Uh, first off, go card. Stanford men's volleyball, 5-0. and Let's go. Yeah, they look great. Yes. Yeah, they do. I can't wait to get started to talk about this. I mean, we talked about doing this again at the start of Champions League. Um, I think it's going to be a good show. Lots to talk about in Champions League. Yes, there is. So, but before we jump into Champions League, I wanted to ask one Stanford question, Eric, because we've, for some reason, there is a little, a little bug going around Stanford that people are getting dig kills. I mean, we saw Justin Louis get one, at least one, maybe two. We saw another guy just like take a ball off the chest and score. And speaking of like yes. liberos and people, people scoring points who aren't used to scoring points. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what's the best kill of your career? And why is it the one against Argentina in the 2015 World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny you ask that. Because in college, they'll count it as a kill. But internationally, it never goes as a point. Really? A why not? Kill will never, it never goes down as a point. It's I don't know what it goes down as, but it's just a nothing <sighs> for us. Come on, boomers. Figure it but out. That's, that's such a shame. To- I would have to say it's the one against Argentina, 2015 World Cup. Ooh, I believe it was like 20 to 17, 21 17. We were kind of struggling to bring it home. We win that set. We win the World Cup. So contextually, it was like a big point. Was it, it like was the massive. best volleyball player of my life? No, but I think. <laughs> no, that was... the best volleyball play of your life was the kick assist at Stanford. That was a great one, too. The, I, that honestly, one is like I mean, one of the most legendary. That's also lucky if you would ever see me play that sport, soccer slash football. But um, yes, dig kills at Stanford. I had one. I, I had one point in my Stanford career, and that was a dig kill against Lewis. So you know, okay, maybe, maybe should... I, I, man, that, that's <laughs> such a that's such a shame they don't count those internationally. I, I, for some reason, I stumbled upon the clip of that 2015 Argentina World Cup play recently, and it reminded me because. You're right. It was a huge moment. Like you it basically sealed you guys to win the tournament. And then, yeah, good times. So with the feels like ages ago, honestly. And it was the last game, 12, 11 matches in like 16 days that the World Cup used to go. And we were we were crawling home, if I remember correctly. So we were fortunate to yeah. get that one done. Good times. So uh, let, let's let's shift gears. Let's talk about Champions League. So if 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 people watching didn't catch our show that we did, Eric, you and I, to preview Champions League kind of before the fourth round started. One of the big things that we talked about and that we're, is really going to kind of frame the way we talk about in this show leading towards the last week of the fourth round is the new format. So there's it's, it's a different Champions League format this year, and you've, I've got the bracket up on the screen now. This is really important. The change this year is that now 11 teams make it out, not eight. And there's no drawing of lots when you get to the bracket stage. Everything is preceded. The seeds are known based on exactly the pool standings and the tiebreakers of where you finish in your pool and where you are compared to all the other teams. So that's really important because now, just kind of like the world championship in Poland this past year, because the seeds are known going into the bracket, teams are looking at that and trying to kind of do a little bit of math on where they might end up and who they might be playing on certain sides of the bracket in certain phases. So that's new this year to Champions League, and that's why I think this sixth week is going to be really, really interesting. Real quick, Eric, how do you feel about that? Like, as a player, you know, you've you've been able to experience either side of it. How do you feel uh, with that being the new way that, that, that we do Champions League? I think I'm a fan of it, to be honest. I think there were there are moments when in Champions League where you work so hard to get first, and then you get you get put in this draw, and you're you're playing against the best second place team, who just might happen to be a Trento or a Lube if they're in the same pool, and you just have the draw of death. Whereas in this, you kind of you know where you're going to go. You can prepare yourself a little bit better. Obviously, teams are working their hardest to win every single match to get that one, two, three seed. 
I think it's just better, you know, a little bit more clear the picture, what's going to happen. And maybe the downfall, we, we might talk about this, is teams, you know, struggling or like just not, you know, they, they might play the system a little bit toward, in this last round. That would not be the first time we've seen uh, people in volleyball try and play the system of a tournament to improve their draw or whatever it is. So then that that's that's what's going to be really fascinating about this sixth week. So let's let's take a look at the schedule for week six, the matches that are going down uh, again in, in Champions League fourth round. Everything is home and away. You play everybody twice. And so now we're, we're entering that this last week of fourth round. Everybody has already seen each other once. All of these are rematches. Uh, but the matchups, and we can talk about like the previous results last time some of these teams played, are going to be kind of interesting. So this is going down every match. Is this coming Wednesday? Wednesday, January 25th. A lot of them are at the same time as well. And that's something that I think it's kind of cool that the CEV did this because a lot of the time it's like yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And like if a match is already done, it tells you a lot more about what what might be happening in the standings. It's, We're not really going to know anything. It's the FIFA, the FIFA style. That's how they they have to do it in the World Cup to finish out the uh the the pool play. So uh, yeah, I, I also like that that, that we're do, we're doing it that way. I mean, it may, sucks for us because we have to watch two games at once, or it not is more. tricky for the fans. But yeah. we're also used to that with typical, uh, you know, uh, any league, any league scheduling. They usually all play at the same time. So, so starting us off, first thing in the in the morning North American time is a uh, Hulk Bank Ankara versus Haybar Pizardzik and that that crazy pool B that we've seen be so nuts. We we would expect Hawk Bank to win that. But then if they do, they're going to win their pool, as we'll talk about in a minute. But after that, all, all the chaos really starts. Uh, I, I'll be on the call for Yashemsky versus Friedrichshafen, and I'm fascinated to see what those two teams do strategically. Then a couple other big ones, Berlin versus Zabierce is huge. Uh, Eric and Zaxa versus Trentino is huge. And then a couple of the other teams who are in like in the one seed position in their pools, their set record is going to be really important. So JW, Perugia, um, Trentino, uh, Lube, not quite so much, but to, in a battle to get that number one overall seed, there's going to be a lot of drama going on. So uh, another big one is also going to be uh, uh, Zirat Bankasi against Ljubljana, because right now Ljubljana is in second place and Zirat Bankasi is is in third. So that one is literally going to de- depend who 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 goes head through, to head, yeah. and then you know that other team. Because if we look at it, like. Um, like Zirat Bankasi has to win this, and they need to win it with three points. Other, otherwise, otherwise they they don't move through because they're they've only got five points. Mm-hmm. And if Ljubljana loses in, in three points, they're done because they don't even have eight points to uh, to get over. I be- believe Berlin is in is at the top of the third place pools yeah. right now, so where, that's going to be a massive one. Where is that match? That is a great question. I wish I wish it told us here. It's usually um, the team that's on top would be the home team. Okay, so it, it's probably in Ankara then, if, if if this is to be believed. I'll check that out on CV, and that's a big deal. That is that is a big home court advantage in that arena in Ankara, as we've, as we've seen. So, uh, the, and to to Everett's point, to just kind of frame this a little bit more before we jump into each pool, top two in your pool guarantees you to make it out, which is not the case in the past. You had to be like the one of the better ranked second place teams. Not this year. If if you get second in your pool, no matter what, you do advance. And then there's that one third place team that makes it in. So that'll be important for teams to, like in, in that pool, like for example, just trying to get out into the bracket. But more importantly, it's the comparison with the other teams who finish the same place as you that's going to determine some of the seeding stuff. So um, Eric, you pick. Which pool would you like to start talking about? Well, I, let's just start with the... Uh, Perugia, Ljubljana, Zerat Bank pool. pool Great B, idea. Yes. Because we already talked about, and I did a little side note here that if Zerat can win, and I don't know if this player is there already, but they do have a Osmani Wantarena coming oh, to their team, I believe. That is, and yes, massive. That, that is what we very understand. Be very interesting. If they do make the playoffs and he'll start playing, that's pretty big, a pretty big player to sign Good. and then to be playing in the, in the playoffs. So I think that's pretty interesting. That is a great point. So that that one, like Everett said, Zirat versus Lubiana head to head. You see lubiana has got seven points. Zirat's got five. If Zirat grabs three points, they jump Lubiana, get second place guaranteed. And then, yeah, you never know if you pick up a character like Osmani Wantarena, kind of anything can happen. But is, is that official? 
is that that transfer official because it's not a volley box the volley box is is a is a rumor base but I, I don't i don't know the club hasn't said anything about it okay. but as far as we know both like that and thomas jeski the hawk bank anchor both of those are as confirmed as we understand like guys coming from, back from the chinese league and fair enough eric yeah. certainly knows about another guy coming in from the chinese league uh bartosz bednor is his new teammate at zaxa which is confirmed yes. Dressed for a match. Uh, but yeah, so Zira versus Ljubljana, that scenario is pretty simple. It's actually probably the simplest of any that, that, that we kind of got to cover today. Because if Zira wins head-to-head, if they get three points, yeah. they they advance. If they get two points, not going to be enough because Ljubljana would get one. So Zira, Zira needs a three or four set win to advance. If Ljubljana takes two sets, they advance. That simple. Yeah, it's it's in a great spot. I mean, it's basically winner you go home uh, on on either side, and that's awesome. Yeah, that that's that's awesome. That's what that's what we're here. For. That's what we're here for. Yeah. So, speaking of this pool, Eric, I think it's pretty safe to say that the one team <laughs> that nobody really wants to see on the same side in the bracket or in whatever round, nobody particularly wants to play Perugia for very good reason. Uh, they have been absolutely untouchable all year. Uh they're I, I, they're definitely undefeated on the year. But weirdly enough, they dropped a set in week 5 of Champions League to Ljubljana. And in doing that, they're now 15 and 3 in set record. They actually have an uphill battle to try and get the number 1 overall seed. And where they get put in the bracket because they're obviously going to win this pool. They're already guaranteed to win this pool in group E. But where like where they rank among the other teams that win their pools might determine a lot when we get to the bracket. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people banked on Perugia winning every set in this group. And it's just, we were like, oh, they're just going to get the number one seed. But they have just been dropping sets. And I think for everyone else, it's a little bit frustrating (laughs) to be like, okay, they're, they're still around somewhere. They're not definitely in the number one seed. I know that our team has kind of talked about it. Every team is talking about it. You know, JW is talking about it. Trento for sure is talking about it. So, I mean, I expect a 3-0 sweep of Durin for them to finish with three set losses. But, you know, I expected them to also win 18-0 this whole pool. So, um, yeah, I'm banking on a 3-0 sweep here, which then other things could happen. But they're going to win the pool. They're going to be a top four seed. Yeah, I, I think that's the, the the safest play to to assume is that Perugia is going to beat Durin three zero, and they're going to finish eighteen and three in sets with eighteen points. And like I'm I'm looking at their at their set record in Champions League so far. They dropped one set to Zirat Bank at home. They dropped one set to Zirat Bank on the road, and then they dropped one set to Ljubljana a, a, a week or so ago. All of those just kind of weird. And I I, I bet it, and, and from another team's perspective, like. Man, what? Why? Why is this team who's so amazing losing random sets to make their seed worse and just make all, all the chaos for all the teams that might have to play them? That's uh, probably pretty frustrating. Just complacency, though, to me. You know, when you've been that good for for that long, they've only gone to five in one match this year, and that was going to be the, the uh, Super, Super Cup final, the right? Super Copa finals at the, be- the beginning of the season. So, yeah, I think that sometimes you just get a little complacent. And also, sometimes you know the other teams can can steal one. So, it's it's, it's not the end of the world, but. Uh, in this, to me, it's, it's going to be really interesting because all of those teams that are at the top, except for Perugia, have big matches, right? JW is going to be playing Friedrich Schaffen, uh, and then, of course, Trentino is going to be playing you guys, Eric, right? And, you know, I'm, I'm betting that you're not just going to go ahead and give Trentino a 3-0 win. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we'll get there. There's so many scenarios that have just been, like, bouncing around in my head. Um, but this pool, I, th- I didn't know that the Ljubljana Zerat was a, a winner go home situation. So that's pretty cool. It's always, um, well, I guess it's fun to be in those situations as an athlete. You're like, it- it's fun. Right. But, um, that's, that is exciting. I think, Ooh, Zerat at home. Hulk, I mean, that arena in Ankara or wherever they are is pretty sick. And they have it is awesome. Crowd. So I'm going to, I'm going to say they're going to get three points there. I wouldn't. I, don't know. I I wouldn't doubt it. And the the nice part about that is it's you're right. It's it's Zirad versus Ljubljana. Win and in, lose, go home. I mean, we talked about the points thing, but that's actually not really going to affect that many other things in terms of seeding coming out of the other pools. No. It's just kind of a nice little focus no. on that one 
that one match for those just those two teams not going to affect much else the the Perugia beating Duran 3-0 I think is the safest thing to assume right now so that we can kind of benchmark the other and project the other pool winners against 18 points 18 and 3 set record where we expect Perugia to finish is that fair yeah uh, absolutely also just for a little bit of context uh, real quick uh Zirat beat Ljubljana in the first leg uh, 15-12 in the fifth wow so there's there's wow. plenty plenty of uh, uh, opportunities here I think uh, that was in Ljubljana in Slovenia so uh, as you said Eric that Zirat Bankasi gym is is tough one to play in I, I think it's the same uh, the, them and Hawkbank Anker a share in arena because I remember there was a match there or there was a day of Champions League earlier this year where they played basically back to back. Yeah, they also share it with Sport Toto, who my brother played for last season. Ah, so okay. it's it's, a, it's like they all train there, they all play there. It's a big volleyball mess, but that's it's awesome. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> arena. All right, so I, I think that's that's enough to talk about Group E. Because Zero versus Ljubljana is is what it is that one head to head match, and I think you, we got to keep in mind Perugia is very likely to finish with eighteen and point eighteen points, six and zero win loss, and eighteen and three set record. So let's keep that in mind. And uh, Eric, should we talk about Group A next? Another team that has has a case at the number one overall seed. Yep, let's do it. So that that team with the case at the number one overall seed is Eric's Polish rival Yashemski Vengiel. They are right now five and zero with only two lost sets. Now they have a more difficult match in week six than Perugia does. Uh, they're playing Friedrichshafen, who is guaranteed to advance. Friedrichshafen four and one ten points. They're guaranteed to get second. Uh, so the, the, the thing about that is, does Friedrichshafen? Put put does Friedrichshafen play the starters? Does Friedrichshafen try to win this match? Does Friedrichshafen try to spoil Yashemsky's potentially getting the number one overall seed, or do they kind of punt, rest the starters, don't get anybody injured because they know they're guaranteed to get second place? That that I think is 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 an absolute key. I oof. I didn't even think about that. I would love to know their German schedule. I know the German league doesn't have a ton of matches. I think they go for it. I know their coach. Uh, Lebedew, Lebedew, yeah. Lebedew. I think they go for it at least two sets, which if they don't get the first set, I don't think they're getting a set. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see about. We'll see about that. But obviously, this pool's clear. Yastrzemski's going to win. Friedrich Sofin's going to get second. It's just if Friedrich Sofin can take a set, a lot of different things happen in some of the other pools. So exactly. I, I know that this game is at six o'clock next Wednesday, which is like one of the earlier games. And a lot of teams are going to be watching. Them. I know. I know that. So, so real quick, Eric, you're asking about uh, Friedrich Schaffen's schedule. They got a win against Giesen on Wednesday and tomorrow on Sunday, they take on Duran. So they've got, that's, that's, that's going to be a big matchup for, uh, for them against Duran. Um, because that's another of the top teams in, in the Bundesliga. So you have to wonder. Like That's going to be three games within the span of a week, from Wednesday to Sunday, b- back to Wednesday. Yeah, they have Do they... Sunday, Wednesday, and then the next Saturday, but against VCO Berlin, who's yeah, that, terrible. That doesn't, yeah, that doesn't matter. You can play your, you can play your, like, you can play literally your practice squad against right. VCO per- Berlin and, and win. Um, but it will have to be, it will be inter- interesting to see if they rest guys tomorrow against Durin, and just not punt it uh, for them because Duran's game doesn't matter this this week in Champions League to get ready for it for this one, or do they just kind of you know just go for second place? That is fascinating, and the, the reason why it really matters it doesn't matter at all for Friedrichshafen, but it really matters for Yashemsky. And the reason why is because to compare them to Perugia, if JW wins three zero, they finish at eighteen and two in sets. That would they would win the tiebreaker with Perugia at that point on set record. Yeah, if, only if they beat Friedrichshafen in three yeah. zero, if they drop one set, if it's three to one, then JW and Perugia would be tied in everything, including set record. And it would come down to literal points, <laughs> like yeah, a literal yeah, point ratio. Perugia's point ratio is better, but okay. I, I think Friedrichshafen is going to go for it. I mean, it's just one of those situations where you want to put your best foot forward in the Champions League against the top team. Mark has, you know, he's coached in Germany. He's coached in Poland. His wife is literally from that town. 
So I think he goes for it. I think he goes for it. I, I kind of hope that he goes for it. I, so that the lo- I hope he goes for it too. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you certainly <laughs> hope he goes for it. So for, for teams like Eric and probably most of the teams in Champions League, it actually would, I think it would help most teams for Perugia to get the one seed. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think so. I think that would take a pretty big, you know, big relief for a team like Trento and us, Xavier Che. Probably not Lou there, Ankara, but, you know, a lot of different teams. I know us, Trento, <laughs> we're going to be watching this match. Yeah. So last time they played, uh, Yashemski beat Friedrichshafen 3-1 to one in Germany. And I remember watching this because Friedrichshafen smoked them in the first set. And then they had set points in the second and oh, yeah. served the ball so badly and kind of choked it away. Ended up 33-31 as I'm looking at it right now. And then Yashemski kind of didn't look back. So if, if Hoffen had taken two sets, that could have maybe changed everything because JW could then only finish with 17 points. But the, the ball is definitely in, in, in JW's court. If they go out and win 3-0... They leapfrog Perugia. They could get the one seed depending on what happens in Eric's game, Zoxa versus Trentino. But that that's that's going to be huge. I think most people around Champions League are big Friedrichshafen fans on Wednesday. Yeah, one exactly. thing to cons- oh. for sure. One thing to consider right now, Ben, about JW though, is that they are two and four in their last six in in the Plus Liga. Right? They've got one win against uh, Biesco Biala just just recently, and I mean they're the last place team, and one win against Katowice, and losses against Lizavici, losses against Olsten, losses against Lublin, and losses a loss against Zaxa. So JW is not the dominant JW that we saw at the beginning of the season when they were hands down the best team out of Poland. There's a, there's a lot of question marks around that team right now. Yeah, Eric, you, your intimate knowledge of the Plus Liga, obviously, and you've played JW recently. What's what's your take on where they're at as a team right now? Because I know they've battled some pretty significant injuries. They've moved some pieces around midway through the season. What's your assessment on on Yashemski just kind of as a team right now, independent of what's going on with them in Champions League? Yeah, I mean, at the start of the season, I definitely thought that they were going to be pretty unstoppable. You know, a team that could run the table, you know, maybe one, two, three losses down the stretch in the season, but I think they have six now, which is just crazy considering the team that they have had. But, you know, Tony UT was out. Both their middles were out at one point. I believe Gladder is back. He's kind of the emotional center of that team. Um, for now, hasn't really found his rhythm yet this season. You know, they haven't played in a, in a week or, I don't know, a week or so, I can't remember. But I don't know where they're at. You know, they, they definitely don't have the winning confidence that they've had in the past, but this is kind of a, a, a match that they absolutely will win. I do believe that they're going to win this game. It's just whether or not they're going to get that 3-0 or not. Yeah. And so they have a similar week to to Friedrichshof, and they actually have the exact same schedule because they play Stalnis in the Plus Liga tomorrow, yeah. then Hoffen on Wednesday, then Gdansk on uh, this coming Saturday, which is a big week. Like that's, that's, that's three matches in a week, and Nissa is pretty good, and Gdansk is really good. Yeah. I, yeah I think that's just beat us. So. Yeah, <laughs> Gdansky is good. That 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 Bowanch guy on the opposite. I I really like him. He's really good. Yeah, I mean that. Those are those are three matches that Yastrzemski. They're feeling that they have to win, absolutely. Um, especially given their last couple of matches. So it'll be interesting. I mean, there's always a different vibe around the Plus Liga versus Champions League. I do think they're going to win. It's just whether or not Friedrichshafen can take a point or not. Right. So before we move on from this pool, to recap it just a little bit, if if Yashemsky wins 3-0 against Friedrichshafen on Wednesday, they finish 18-2 and two in sets, they will have the tiebreaker over Perugia. They'd be very much in play for the number one overall seed, uh, depending at that point only what Trentino does. So if JW wins 3-0, uh, they'll be the two seed overall at worst. If Hoffen takes a set and Yashemsky finishes 18-3 and three in sets, it, they would likely come down to point ratio against Perugia, which, like Eric said a minute ago, Perugia would likely win that win that tiebreaker. So uh, that would be huge. And then obviously if Hoffen takes two sets and Yashemski finishes with only 17 total points, uh, then they'll drop down even just a little bit further. But that's that's the situation. Hoffen's guaranteed to get second. You could argue they have nothing to play for, and their strategy, I think, will determine a lot this week. Yep. Yeah. Great summary. All right. 
Uh, let's move on to you. You want to talk about your pool, Eric? Next, you're just sure. jumping all over the place. We Eric. are jumping all over the place, but we I, I mean, I'm... we apologize to those out there. <laughs> this this is the chaos of the new Champions League format. It it, it, it forces us. We, you, have, we have no you, choice. You can't blame it on the Champions League because you went from pool E to pool A back to pool D. Well, here's my thinking: is I, I want to talk first about the teams that are in play for the number one overall seed. And so okay. we we talked about Perugia, we talked about JW, and the last team that has a legitimate chance to take the number one overall seed is Trentino. Now, so Trentino is is dead tied with Yashemsky right now. They only have two set losses. Uh, they're, they're perfect 15 points, 5-0 and matches one. Uh, one of those sets was obviously to Eric and Zaksa in, in the first game, and they, they lost a random set to Carlo Varsco uh, hey. earlier as well. And Carlo Varsco is no joke. No, they're not joke. As, as Eric certainly knows, they played him a week or two ago. Real quick, Eric, are you guys a little sick of playing Trentino in the Champions League? <laughs> like, how, how many times are we going to see this, this matchup? Like, don't get me wrong, I love it. I like it too. But it's just yeah. like... it. it is it just like the, the the CEV is just like out here, you know, setting up the schedule, being like, oh yeah, Trentino, Zaxa, we've had good ratings the past few years. Let's just throw them in pool play again. Yeah, it was completely random. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, whenever you play Champions League, there's always some sort of connection in your pool. Like, you know, one year I played Kavika in Champions League. Uh, when yeah, the one year guys. that Stockel was in Champions League, we played in Berlin, where I played for two years. So there's always some sort of you know, some weird connection. And that just happened to be the one this year, I guess, after back-to-back finals of Trento versus Vaxa. But, you know, you, you you get the shock when you see the pools, but then you kind of look at it and you're like, okay, well, we're probably going to be one and two. So at least we're going to advance. Like, it's not the pool of death like we've had in the past. But, yeah, last year. The last, yeah, last year, your last pool year. was ridiculous. But, yeah, we're guaranteed second. I mean, we're guaranteed a one or the best or the second place second team which puts us in the bottom half of that bracket, I believe, that you showed. Yeah, there it is again. So, th- yeah, that the ranking amongst the second-place teams is going to be big. So, Eric, you guys have got, what, 11 points right now? And yes. the only other team that, ev- that even might get more than that, I mean, Xavier could get could get there, but they're only going to be 4-2 and two in match record at best. Uh, Friedrich Safin could get there to 11 points to jump you guys, but right now uh, Zaxa is the sec- is the top ranked second place team in a pool, and so they they would take on in the first round the fifth ranked second place team. The winner of that would take on the number two seed overall, and that uh, if if that happens to end up being Perugia, uh, then that would be a very troublesome spot, and you would kind of get punished for being the best ranked second place team because Perugia messed around and dropped three sets randomly. Yeah, but it could also be Trentino, which is the best case scenario for the SCEV as we just talked about. <laughs> it's, it's pretty wild. I mean, I don't, we don't know the mindset of the match yet because we just have to wait for the Yastrzemski against Rick Soffin game. I think both Trento and us are kind of waiting to see what happens there. I think the best case situation for us would be to try and get that first place. First, the best second place team, which match, matches up against the third place team, which then matches up against the two seed. Right. I think that would would work out for us. I don't know if Perugia can get the second seed. They probably could somehow. I but... think that they I think that they could because if JW drops a set to Friedrichshafen, they then Perugia would probably have them on point ratio, assuming they yeah. beat Duran 3-0. And then if if you guys, Eric, take a set, maybe even two from Trentino, then the, then Perugia could jump them as well. So Perugia, there's still a pretty darn good chance Perugia gets the one seed. Yeah. But there's also just as good of a chance that they get the three seed well, or the two. What match happens first? Is it like because it, like it's really going to come down to like if JW wins their match outright, then is that the situation where Eric, do you just like, you know, let a ball, few balls hit, like hit, hit you know, beat you <laughs> well, in the seam. Like, I, you know, you know it's, it's tough to know what we're going to do. Our coach is pretty intense. You know, the new Canadian coach Everett, I'll give you a shout yes. out. Yes. Um, I think we're going to, we're going to play. I mean, we just lost a match. So it's kind of one of those things where you want to bounce back. We have a new player. You definitely want to, you know, work him in a little bit with our team. But what's interesting to me is if JW sweeps Friedrichshafen, Trento doesn't want to face Perugia in the semifinal if they can both get there. 
And if Trento were to drop up the match to us, they could go to the, that fourth place. Fourth place, first place. Yes, the yeah, the four fourth seed. best first place team, which then oh, up, takes them out of the bracket with Perugia and out on the other side, and they could only face them in the finals. Which right. is that going to ha- like? Could, would they do that? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> but there, there's always potential, you know. They, I think people just really don't want to play Perugia. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be shocked. <laughs> so th- then, that's the thing. Ever you, you asked like the the order of matches that day. Let's put it up again. So JW versus Friedrichshafen. Uh, this is all that's local t- local time for me. So 11 a.m. Central, si- uh, 6 p.m. in Poland. That so. Eric, Eric Eric's match Zaxa versus Trentino is an hour and a half after JW versus Friedrichshafen, and even if even if JW versus Friedrichshafen isn't over yet, you'll know at that point if Hoffen has taken a set. And From that, what I understand, we're two and a half hours after. Oh, two and a half hours after. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so that match will almost definitely okay. be fully over. Maybe something is wrong there, but from my understanding, we are two. No. Yeah, you're correct. You're, you're correct. You're, you're two and a half hours after uh, JW versus Hoffen. So, yeah, you, you and Trentino will really know the situation going into your match. And, yes. yeah, you, you have a point. Maybe Trentino maybe Trentino doesn't want to win. If, if JW wins 3-0 and they can't, they, and they can't overtake them, maybe they, then if they can't get the one seed, they probably want the four. Because they they would take them the longest, or they would see Perugia at the at, in the finals at the earliest. I think that's that's a great point. You know, but then it, what we, logically it sounds it, it it makes sense. But the Perugia game is also at eight thirty our time, and the Lube game, which we'll get to versus Rosalare, is at eight thirty as well. So it's all at the same time. It's, I mean, it's pretty hard to, I mean, knowing Polish teams and knowing Italian teams. They're scout men, you know, they're weight coaches on the side. They're all going to be tracking the scores and telling yeah. you what's going on. So it's unpredictable, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> but like we said, the Australia game is the one everyone's going to be tuning into. And then how teams want to kind of go after it after that, it'll be interesting. Yeah. And again, again, we're, we're talking about the elite the most elite level of professional athletes like the guys that are out there on the court are not going to try and lose that will that will never happen you're never gonna and i I assume eric you'll confirm this you would you would never if you're out on the court you'll never do anything but try to win but the manipulation that would would be going on here is the coach's lineup choices is is that fair to say yeah absolutely i mean you can go back to the 06 world championships and i think a lot of people have not talked about that. I mean, Brazil was putting middles as setters. I love love the Brazilian fans, <laughs> love the Brazilian team, but I mean, they were teams were doing some really shady things in that tournament because they knew of the format and they knew the bracket. So this is one downfall of kind of I guess the the new format, but it'll be really interesting. I don't I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, you don't try to lose. I mean, the hard part is when you put in a, a second team, they're also fighting for contracts they're fighting exactly. for money they're fighting yes. for recognition and they don't want to lose why would you want to lose like you can understand the situation but i don't want to shank the ball who's i don't know who's watching so it's it's a tough spot to be at i think we've all been a part of those matches i mean usa against iran in the world championships four years ago i mean we threw out a second team with a middle blockers outside and we weren't trying to lose that game. I remember that. Yeah. Dan yeah. McDonald on the left. <laughs> it didn't matter at all, but you know, we've all been in that kind of situation. So it sucks, but it happens. Right. So let if if let's say JW wins three zero, because I, I think that's I think that's honestly kind of likely. I think I'm leaning that that might happen because even even if, if even if Friedrichshafen plays their starters JW is very, very good and might still just beat them 3-0. Yeah. Or if Friedrichshafen chooses not to play the starters, I think JW will definitely beat them 3-0. So at that point, the best Trentino could do is sweep you guys, Eric Zoxa, and be dead tied in every area with JW, and it would come down to points. And that is completely unpredictable. If that happens, there's a chance that Trentino ends up the two-seed overall, 
they would then play Perugia in the semis. They don't want that. So I think that if JW wins, if JW wins 3-0, I think there's an extremely good chance that Trentino plays the bench. I think there's an extremely good chance that Trentino plays the bench. All right. I guess we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I mean, the other thing is, obviously, Trento can weigh their options. I mean, they would have to sweep us to get the number one seed and keep right. the point ratio. And, you know, we were due sets, took one set off of them in Trento, um, not playing our best ball. I think we, you know, I <laughs> at the very least, we should take a set. So I don't think that they can necessarily bank on sweeping us to- absolutely not i mean you guys have won the last two champions leagues whatever whatever anybody wants to say about that of course the of all the matchups for teams who have potentially the number one seed on the line this week trento's matchup is by far the hardest because you guys eric are a team that very much could win champions league again um barring yeah. maybe a, an annoyingly early match against perugia like trento has by far the hardest match this week of any of the teams that we're kind of talking about here for the one seed. So I think it'll come down to what happens with JW. If JW wins three zero, I think there's a great chance Trentino chooses to play the bench. But if JW drops a set or even two sets, then the number one seed is Trento's for the taking. And at that point, I think they, they throw the big guns out there. Absolutely. It's 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 so mind boggling that we have to even consider teams doing this (laughs) in (laughs) sport or in any sport, but People think about this. I mean, I know every player that knows what's going on, you know, understands these types of situations. And it is what it is. Every team does it. Every team knows about it. It's not great all the time, but it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. So is there anything else to talk about about your pool, Eric, before we move on? Um. I want. I honestly want to shout out Carla Varsco. I, did, I don't think anyone gave them anything this season for Champions League, and they fought really hard. They were a solid team, pretty good home court advantage, and they gave us everything that we could handle. So we're pretty lucky to get away with even two points out of from their, from playing in the check. So good job to them. Agreed. Uh, they were a, a pleasant surprise. Who was not a pleasant surprise was Menon. I think Menon and uh, man. Why are we giving the Belgian league more Champions League spots? That 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 team was not good because of Russia. Oh well, uh, yeah, obviously. But like yeah. men and uh, and they 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 obviously tried their hardest. But this this pool against these teams, Eric and Zaxa, Trentino, like Menon is not at that level. No, you're, you're, yeah, you're not. I think it's a tough spot to be in. I, I yeah. they did pretty well last year in Belgium, and we talked about how they just lost pretty much all their players. Yeah, and to to. On the flip side, I have been that team. I've been the men in in a Champions League pool where we only won two sets back when I played in Austria. So I know the feeling. It, it's not fun. It's a great experience, but you're kind of like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly. So, you know, I give credit to them for, for going out and competing. I've been in their shoes. It's just that's a pretty tough group to be in, especially in yeah. the scenario that they're, they were under. Very much so. All right, are we are, are we going to move on? Are we going to go pool B or pool C? If we're going to keep the pattern going, we should go to pool B. I, I think we should go to pool C because Lube is, Lube is undefeated and Honk Bank is not. So like Lube, okay, Lube right now, uh, the the leaders in Group C, they if assuming they win their match this week, they will um, they'll they'll beat out whoever ends up winning Group B. And so Lube has fourteen points right now. They they lost two sets randomly in the very first match against Benfica if I remember right yeah yeah they went yeah they 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 went 0-2 down to Benfica that's right that's at, right at Benfica um but this time to, to finish this off they have they play uh they play Rusolari yeah they, they play Rosolari and then Tools plays Benfica but Rosolari and Tools are both at the same like they both have seven points obviously Tools in a better position playing against Benfica but that we know that Benfica game isn't going to be a gimme right that's going to be a team that wants to win and I mean, does Lube lie? Like, does, is there any uh, chance here for Lube to lie down and try to get that fourth first place team to be on the opposite side of the bracket from Perugia? I think that's a great point. I think that's very possible because unless all of like Trento, Perugia, and JW all lose two sets at least, like Lube has an extremely slim chance to get the one seed overall. 
Uh, I think they're right now they're they would be the four seed if it ended right now, and I, that's probably where they're going to end up unless unless Trentino plays the bench or unless unless Trentino loses to Eric and Zaxa. So I think there's a great chance that Lube chooses to lie back and get that four or five seed overall. It would be hilarious if Trento is playing their second team against us and then Lube rolls out their second team against Ruzelare. Trento hoping that Lube is going to win and Lube hoping Trento. That That's hilarious. <laughs> that would be very funny. And then they would. There, there's a, a chance that they would then play each other in in that 4-5 matchup in the first round, which would be really funny because they played each other today. Yeah, and one thing to note as well, Lube winless in 2023. Oh they my have, god, they is have that not, true? Yeah, they have not won a match in 2023. They lost to Trento. Uh, they, they, they beat and Benfica they, in Champions League. They're, they're, okay. they're winless in the Super League. Yeah, that, sorry. They're, they're... I think it's at home. I think they're going to go for it. But um, Hawkbank is guaranteed the five seed. So I know that you, you said that yes. um, they could play each other. But they, they wouldn't because Hawkbank is guaranteed the five seed, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that that's you're right. That's a good point because Hulk Bank and Pool B, the most they could get is 13 points. And even if even if like Lube or Trento lose a match, they still would have them on points. So you're right. But that that would, that would be very funny if both like you're saying if both Lube and Trento like rolled out the benches and then randomly lost games, ended up playing each other early, or ended up playing Perugia early. Or yeah, I mean boy, that's there's the a worst. lot of play here. That's the risk is that you just don't know what the other teams are going to do, especially a Perugia who's lost a set here or there. Like you can bank on them winning three zero and taking that one spot if JSW loses a set, but you don't know what we, you just never know what's going to happen. So no. it's interesting. And then I, I honestly wasn't thinking about Rosalari getting two or three points, Tour getting three points, and then potentially both advancing if Xavier Che beats Berlin, which we'll get into. But I mean, if we had to bet on it right now, Lube is going to win, Tour is going to win, and Tour is going to get that second place spot. Yeah, that that would be the most likely thing for sure. And so we got to talk about that the, the second place scenario in this pool because right now you got Rusolari and Tour both at seven points, but Rusolari has three wins, Tour only has two. So uh, that 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 win tiebreaker is huge, and that's oh, more important. Yeah. That's more important than points in Champions League. It's not not the way it is in like in the Plus Liga or the Super Liga when points matters first, wins matters first in Champions League. But if Lube beats Rusolari like we're expecting them to, and Tours beats Benfica like we're expecting them to, both Tours and Rusolari would then be three and three. And if, if if Tours beats Benfica like we expect them to, they are they will get points from that situation. So Rusolare actually is the team here with everything in the world to play for. They need not only do they need sets one, they need points and maybe even a match one against Lube to guarantee themselves to advance. Because if Tours beats Benfica like we expect, maybe they get to ten points, and and Rusolare would have to somehow grab three points from Lube to have a chance at second place in that pool. So that's going to be really interesting. Yeah. Sorry, I've got something in my throat here. My bad. <laughs> it's okay. So yeah, I mean, that's the situation in that pool. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's just whether or not these teams are going to play. Right. And and the, the third place team, like the one third place team that gets a spot in the next round could come from this pool. Or it could come from Pool B, who we'll talk about in a second. I think that's not not only is that the two most likely things. I actually think it might be guaranteed. I think that's the only thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think I think that's guaranteed. So, uh, anything else about Group C before we talk about the weirdest group? I just think Ruzelari is one of those teams that it's they're they almost have this like annoying identity where they're just gonna make teams work and they're a good solid strong team and they've always been like that in the champions league so they're they're not just gonna like lie over and die for lube here they're gonna fight absolutely and they're a good team i mean it was 3-1 and really close the first time if, if i remember correctly. that's so that's correct yeah they're just a, like a scrappy little belgian team i don't know how else to describe it <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah, so Rusolari beat Tour in five the last time they played a week or two ago, and that, that that might be key when it comes to the tiebreakers. But yeah, Rusolari has no choice but to play the starters and try and beat Lubitschu Nova. That would be 
a one hell of an upset if they pull it off. And Tour definitely needs to beat Benfica. I expect that they will, but we've seen flashes from Benfica this year being pretty good. I mean, I know they're 0-5. They took Lube to 5. Where, where else did they get a point from? They, they, they took Rusolari to 5 earlier in the year. As, as I said, like Benfica is a, is a proud club. Right. On right. like on a lot of levels. Right. And it's one of the most legendary just sport clubs in, in Europe. That's not a, like that's a team that would take a lot of, away from getting a Champions League win. Right. So I, I don't think at any point uh, I like I think Benfica wants to go out there and play spoilers. And Eric, I, I wanted to ask you about the concept of like a four seated team playing spoiler because we've seen it before. And you were telling me about a scenario last year where I think it was Haybar Pizardzik came out of nowhere and, and took points or beat somebody that that really made your last match against Lube and Pools last year much easier. Is, is that right? Yeah, it was one of these situations where I believe they had, well, Bulgaria is a, an hour ahead, I think, of the rest of Europe. So they were playing their match. If Kebar took one point from Ruzalare, I believe our match became irrelevant based off points and seedings and all of this. So we're in our match, freaking out about their match, hoping <laughs> it goes four, hoping it goes five. I just remember me and uh, Norbert Huber running to the locker room after our first set and finding out that they went five. We all kind of took this, you know, a deep breath of relief. Huge sigh of relief. Yeah, yeah. sigh of relief. And, you know, we ended up winning the game, but we were more worried about that match at that point than than anything. So, yeah, spoilers happen. Um, As that team, like, you want to put your best foot forward. Like I said, I've been there. You you want to try and win. You want to try and take a point. Anything to just – boost your morale in that group. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if Benfica goes out there and, and fights pretty hard against tour. Yeah. And I think they will. So basically everybody in group C, let's go back to group C of all the teams who has the least pressure to win this week. It's actually Lube. Rusolare has got to beat Lube. Tour's got to beat Benfica. Benfica yeah. has, has literally nothing to lose. They might as well go out and try and steal a game. So it's it's Lube kind of sitting pretty at the top of the group, weirdly enough. But also, remember, Lube has only got one win in 2020. They are struggling. They, they, they do that's, not look good. That's lately. a struggling team right now. I feel like no matter what, they're going to want to go out there and just try to get a win, right? Just try to gain some momentum for the then because they're they're moving on regardless. They want to build that momentum for the next round. They want to build that momentum for the, for the super super league as well. I agree. And anytime you're at home and you're dealing with management and and fans and you know the Italian culture can be pretty tough around volleyball. So I think they uh, I, I think they try to win. I don't I I think they try to win. Okay. <laughs> I, I kind of think so too. Oh man, I really, I really don't know. I, I think I think more more than like like Everett said, I think he's got a great point. More about more than the standings. I think just the way that Lube has been playing lately, that team needs a win and they need to do it convincingly just for for their own sake. And uh, yeah. I, I think there's a great chance that that's the mindset that they have going into playing Rusolara this week. All right, shall, shall we move on to Group B, the the weirdest and most fun group of the year? We don't we don't have really have a choice. This is the last group to, to, to cover here. <laughs> but we are yeah. and this, to move on. I mean, we could talk more about the other groups. But you're right. You're right. You got me there. I think but, we could talk uh, about any volleyball subject. But I mean, this is true. the group. This that's is the group that we we said was it's the group of death. It's a complicated group. I don't know what we predicted, but. It's it's everything we hoped for. Yeah, it's also it's also the group that is probably going to give us that third place team, which let's be honest is is the best case scenario. Um, like only in a situation if you know both Rosalari and uh, Tools win, and one of them has has it has you know they would both need to win in three or three one to get those three points and have that ten points because Berlin is currently the best third place team um, with that uh, with that eight points. Um, and if they win over over Zavierci, uh, that again, yeah, by the uh, way, which, which they did in the last leg. So Berlin's got Zavierci this week. Uh, Hulk Banks got Hebar Pizardzik. Berlin beat Zavierci in the last leg. Although I think that was in Germany. Is this one in no, Poland? I, I think I thought that one was in 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 Poland. In Poland. Yeah. Wow. So that's that's going to be massive. And like the match, like like Eric, you know just as well as anyone of how hard. Uh, the Berlin's gym can be like Max Schmeling Hall can be 
lively when they want it to be. And I think this is going to be one of those situations that we're going to see maybe even the, the second deck open for this one. Ooh. I would hope so. I would hope so. I mean, it's a, it's a massive, massive game. And I thought that Xavier Che was guaranteed a spot in the playoffs, but now looking at full C and understanding what's going on there, it's, it's wild. I think both teams are going to go for the win. Uh, both teams have been playing pretty well. Berlin, I think they've won their last couple of matches. Have no, they? Berlin. No, Berlin got it lost to uh, they, Gießen. They played the last bench. Weekend. They played the bench and oh, lost yes. to Gießen. That was weird. And they also they also went. They were real. They they lost a set to Durin, and we were real close to going down 0-2 against Durin on Wednesday. Yeah, that, that was that was a good match. Yeah. So they, so, they, did, I mean, they did take a three one. Who knows? But. Um, Xavier Che, you know, Danani, he wasn't playing today. He had a he has a knee injury, from what I understand. That I I have no idea if that's gonna be ready by Wednesday, but that's a big, you know, factor for that team. But they did win today against Lublin. You know, they're just a strong team. I really, really did not think they were gonna lose to Berlin the first time, but you know, if if Sotola, is that his name? The opposite for Berlin. Yeah, the, the yeah. Czech kid. If he can that's go crazy. off, they're pretty they're pretty dangerous. Yeah, he's good. Uh, I I wasn't sure how how Berlin was going to be like relying on him as the primary scorer this year, and he's been really impressive. Uh, I, I think he's been pretty good. We've talked about Berlin a decent amount this season, and we think that their outside hitter position is is a big weak point. And uh, but Xavier Che, I mean th- that team outside hitter is their strong point with Kvolek and Kovacevic. I'm not super high on David Kanarski, uh, but also that that's. Xavier Che for as good as Kvolek and Kovacevic and Danani are, it's actually statistically not that good of a reception team, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. You know, they're kind of like a medium pass. I mean, Danani's a nails passer, but the other two are a little bit more medium pass. And, you know, I could talk about stats all day, but you, we, we don't. <laughs> in, in this kind of situation, an 8 to 10 foot pass is pretty decent, but it's not going to show up on the stat sheet. Um so they get the job done. They're just a good, solid team. And I think it's going to be a battle. I wish I could watch that, but I do think it's at 7 o'clock here. So it is one of the earlier, semi-earlier games. But Let's, I mean, let's look at the schedule. Hawkbach here is going to win the pool either way. They're guaranteed yes. to the speed. Um, I don't think that's interesting at all. They're, I mean... They're they're cool. I, I I enjoy watching that team. They had a great match against Xavier Che last week. Oh, that match was awesome. That was a banger. Awesome. That was a banger. To be honest, I found it very difficult to watch based off the referees and the challenges. But that that was that was rough. I I could tell like uh, the players were really struggling their way through dealing with that with that officiating fiasco. They were like we we said it on the show last week. They. The, the officials lost control of that game. And that is, that is very rare in volleyball, especially at this level, but it, it was not good. So, yeah, I mean, Hulkbunk against Hebar, pretty much irrelevant at this point. Hulkbunk's right. going to or, you know, they're going to win the pool. Hebar, are they going to fight for it? It just it doesn't matter. I'm sorry. I love, I love the coaches of Hebar. They were my coaches in Russia. But oh. it just doesn't matter. The but it, 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 what, 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 it could though. If no, Hebar, he's he's right. It, it it completely doesn't matter. Even if Hawkbank loses three zero, they've still got Zabierche on set ratio. Even if Zabierche wins three zero, but the, the point they're both at ten points. Or am I just looking at that wrong? Oh uh, wow! Four and two. Wait a minute. Four and two. They both. I yeah, they got that wrong. I take everything back, Everett. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, like, the, 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 they're sitting even at points right now. Like, they're that's the only thing that you. that's a point for like, you. Yeah, because yeah. Michael Michael Ma talked about it in yeah. their in their podcast too, about how 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 they're 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 all tied up on, on points it's, right it's now. Win, it's it, it's definitely win and in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but like, as, wow, I was so off on that. I apologize. And I also called it one of our last podcasts. I do think there's a win, win in Hebar somewhere, somewhere, right? Yeah, Ever, Everett did call a little Hebar spoiler. He he did call one. Oh man, yeah, yeah, We're, Eric, I was with you. I was wrong about that. One, one thing, Eric, I'm all off on that. I apologize, Eric. One thing that I'd I'd, I'd want to ask you is just kind of kind of stepping away from the pool and just looking at Hawk Bank as a whole. How are they viewed? Like, where do you guys view them? Do you guys see them as a real threat to? make a deep run in this tournament, like especially with the potential, you know, potential addition of Thomas Jaski, 
this is a, a pretty good team that's got some skill on it. We know that Namir can be, can be, is one of the most prolific scorers that we have in volleyball right now. Like, is Hawkbank a team that people are worried about? You know, I think yes and no. I think if you're looking at the pool winners, I would put them at number five right now. Um, but, you know, knowing Namir, knowing Mike Amaa, a good friend of mine, you never count those guys out. You don't count a team out that has Namir who can... If you have an opposite that can score 40 points with eight aces in a match, you don't count them out. That's right. just horrible. <laughs> you know, it's just that's the way it goes. So I think that I, I'm going to give them a number five seed. But, I, you know, with Tommy in there and just, you know, if they can be pretty steady, I can see them winning that four or five matchup. I mean, and also to... Uh, to, to 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 look at it with for Hall Bank, um, oh, I had something to say and I completely forgot what it was. <laughs> oh man, that's frustrating because it was a good point. I, you, Eric, you're going to give me another point for this one now, and now I've c- c- completely forgotten. <laughs> minus oh. minus points for Everett. Um, minus for, for yeah. I, I guess. Oh, I oh sorry. I, I actually know. I would actually rank them higher than Lube. Oh, just based off based off the eye test and how Lube has been playing recently. Like they, they've got that young team, can't figure it out on the left side. You've got old man Zaitsev, who's not what he used to be, or GGF, who's just not getting it done at that level. I would put like in a head to head. I think Hulk Bank beats um, beats Lube, and it's possible that we see that in the four five yeah. game. Like that, that's the way the seeds are right now. Yeah, I, I think that would be a spicy game for sure. Like that you know that home and home series point. would be awesome. I I'm I'm fifty fifty with that match, to be honest, right now. I haven't watched a ton of Blue Bay this year. I know that they are struggling, but ooh, that 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 could be a good one. Blue Bay's real young. Like their their outsides are are twenty one, twenty one and, and, and eighteen, nineteen. 19 Nikolov, yeah. yeah. And then when you have Gabby Garcia Fernandez out out there too, you know, that it, it is a young team. And when you don't have Zaitsev on the court, it's a young team that lacks an emotional, like, loud leader. They don't talk very, very much. Yeah, that's true. Great libero, though. Uh, Belasso is the man, and Dicheco yeah. is the man. But Chinignese in the middle, too. Like, yeah, but, yeah, but the, the, it's, not, it's not like the, 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 the pure terror that was Robert Landy Simone and Dicheco. It's, no, it's exactly. just not the same, like, scary team that they were the last couple of years. No, no, not at all. So that's why that's why I think like I agree too that I think it's probably a 50-50 game between the, between those two, but I would give advantage to Namir for sure. I think I, I would give only advantage to Hawkbank if Jeshki is there and he plays. And I'm not sure how how soon that that transfer is going to get locked down and get him, you know, in the mix cuz it it takes takes a while. You can't just show up in a gym and start within less than a week. It doesn't usually work like that. Yeah. No, yeah. You, no you're right. Um but if we if we look at you know this pool specifically, there's so many because you know that Berlin wants to defend it at home. You know they they want to beat Zavierce. Um and you know whoever like like Zavierce also doesn't want to be that third place team, right? I mean, it's possible even still at this point for Zavierce to win their pool. It's also possible for them to miss the playoffs entirely. If if Xavierche gets three donged by Berlin and, and so they they stay at ten points and whatever happens in Pool C, like if Rusolare gets like if if let's say Lube plays the bench against Rusolare, Rusolare wins three zero, they're three and three, thirteen and ten in sets. That would be better than Xavierche and tied in points. Like Rusolare would would knock Xavierche out as as the third place team, even if Tours gets third in Pool C, like. Anything is possible for Xavier. They can win their group. They can miss the playoffs. They could get third. They can get second. They need to beat Berlin. Yeah. They I, need I, to beat Berlin. And Berlin probably needs to beat Xavier to advance as a third place team because there's a great chance that in Pool C, there's at least one team at eight, nine, maybe even 10 points, maybe two. Dang, I want to watch this game now. I don't think I can. <laughs> I think it's an hour before yours, maybe. Yeah. It's. That's when our warm up starts. So yeah, cool. yeah. But yeah, it's an it's an hour before yours. That that's that that and and Trentino versus Zoxa are going to be my my favorite matches to watch that day because they're probably going to be the best games. I think the JSW versus Hoffen is maybe the most important in terms of the seating, but uh, Berlin versus Avierche will be probably the most competitive and highest level of two teams with the most to play for. If that's fair to say. Yeah, 
you guys, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to close this. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> no problem, Eric. Um, yeah, you're not wrong. This is the most interesting pool right now. And has it, been the whole season. Has has been has been the entire entire time. I think Zavierche also just like I I think for for them this might be one of the most important games of of the year, hands down. For both teams, yeah, but but for for both teams for sure, but definitely for Zavierche, just because especially the way they lost that last game, there's a lot of contr- controversy behind it. There was a lot of talking going on, so yeah, I think it's going to be it, it's it's going to be interesting, and it's going to be very interesting to see um, how they react emotionally and how good Berlin is on that day because that Berlin team is is a hot streaky team, yeah. absolutely. And so there's a I think that I would be shocked by a three zero in either direction, and that I think is what it would take for one of those teams to lose three zero to miss the playoffs. Uh, so I, like I I could see four sets, I could see five sets. I would be shocked if if either team won three zero. So there's a great chance that even the loser of that match who ends up getting third in pool B still ends up making the playoffs. There's a pretty good chance of that. Um, but it, it's certainly not guaranteed, especially with, with, with what's going on in Group C. So probably probably match of the year in Champions League so far. Well, last week's the, the Zavierche versus Hockey. No, the one coming up, Zavierche versus Berlin, might be the most important match of, of the tournament so far. Yeah, we we it, it could be. I honestly, I just don't have that much confidence in Berlin. Me neither. But like, I don't have I don't have an overwhelming amount of confidence in Xavier. I don't I don't think mom, I have way more confidence. Like just on paper, you look at that roster compared to Berlin's roster. Game's not played on paper. Ever. No, you're, you're we we do know this. We, we we do know this absolutely. But at the end of the day, like, well, at the I end mean, of the day, I know I know that we're watching this pool because if we end up set the best second place team, we're gonna play the third. The only third place team which could come out of this pool. So it is it's one to watch. And I know that we are watching it closely. Yeah, so that, that third place team, it could be Berlin, it could be Xavierche even, it could be Russelare, it could be Tours. Like let's let's look at that right now. So uh oh. this is a, as as the, the third place ranking team stand right now. Berlin's got the eight points. Tours plays Benfica. There's a great chance that they win that and get two, maybe three points. Zerot is not Zerot Bank is not going to be one of the third place teams that make it up, makes it up, but they've got a chance, like like we talked about in Pool E, to beat Ljubljana and get second. So it's it's it might be guaranteed that the third place team that does advance comes out of either Pool B or C. Does does that sound right to you, Eric? It does. And I mean, it's mostly mostly likely to be coming out of Pool C, right? Because Pool B is is it's or sorry, Pool. It's probably going to come out of Pool B B because Berlin's Berlin's got that one point advantage right now. It's a long shot for that Tools Rosalari situation to happen, in my in my mind. It's it is a long shot, but it's totally possible. I'm uh, because one of them, one of the two Tours of Rosalari, look at Group C again. One of them is going to win, probably, and and it's probably going to be Tours beating Benfica. the, the crazy part would be if Rusolari beats Lube. That's when it would get really crazy. That's unlikely unless Lube, you know, sits sits the starters, which I, I would expect them not to do. But if they do that, if both Tours and Rusolari win, then that that Group B game, Xavier Eche versus Berlin head to head, becomes even spicier. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think these. I think this match is going to be spicy, regardless. Oh yeah. Like I, I think there's going to be tons of spice. Ooh. It's not going to be white people cooking for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, All it's, right. it's, it's it's pretty wild, but I do think Hogbank's going to win. I think they're going to win their pool. I yeah. Think they're going to get the fifth seed, and then I'm done predicting after that. <laughs> I think that's fair. So uh, we can look at the bracket one more time. That that number one overall seed, which could be JSW, it could be Trento, it could be Perugia. Those are probably the three teams that are that are contending for that spot. First ranked pool winner on the top of the bracket there. Then the two and three seeds probably would be two of those three teams: Trento, JSW, or Perugia. Down on the bottom of the bracket would hypothetically match up in the semifinals. So. Uh, again, everybody's kind of rooting for for Hoffen to take a set or two from JSW to allow Perugia to grab the one seed. That would that would create a just 
that that bottom half of the bracket is where everyone would then want to. And we, would, that. we would have to take at least one set from Trento for that happens. Right, and that, which is very possible. I mean, Zoxa, you guys are awesome. You're playing at home, and you just got a world class outside hitter in the middle of the season. So that is very possible. Speaking of which, Eric, if I mean, obviously, if you can't answer this, don't. But what's the likelihood that we see Bednorz, you know, suit up for you guys? on Wednesday like and start because he he warmed up in the match against Nissa. he played a little bit against Gdansk but yeah I mean, uh, collectively we just didn't have a great outing against Gdansk but I think the likelihood that if he's healthy is a hundred percent okay to All see him right. in the game at some that's point the, I mean at some well. point he's gonna be in the game if he's healthy okay, okay. does does the addition of him to your squad does that give you guys like, how much of a boost does that give you? How much of confidence does, does that bring your roster? Because, you know, you guys are the two-time defending champion, the Champions League champions. At the beginning of the season, you know, everyone was kind of writing you off. But with his addition, like, anything is possible. Like, that's still a fantastic team that you guys have around him. Of course him, it is. Or, yeah. w- w- without him. But with the addition of him, that really adds another top-notch score. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Ben Norsch is a, you know, fourth, fifth, third, sixth, I don't know, outside for Poland who just has a ton of experience, who I just learned this last night, was in the Rio Olympics in 2016 as a 23-year-old. So, you know, he's just a high-quality player, physical, physical. You know, we don't quite have that, you know, high-flyer, swing-high, hit-hard kind of player this season, you know, kind of like a Leon or a Semenyuk. First day, just ridiculous bombing the ball. I look at our libero and I was like, that was different. That was different. <laughs> so, you know, if we can kind of figure out how to how to fit together to pass the ball, get him the ball in the right situations, especially in these early matches, it can make the world of different. You know, I think if we can just figure out our team, the team aspect of it all, we're right there. And I'm so excited to to be moving forward because, you know, our first match together, it wasn't it wasn't great. I'll be honest, but you know, we're putting in the work and. You know, it's cool. It's, it's just, it's a different situation. I've never had something like this, but I'm confident and I'm really, I'm really excited. I mean, you, you know, we've seen you guys make fantastic runs the past. I mean, you weren't, you went there two seasons ago, but you were last year. Does it kind of feel like that? You guys kind of feel like you're gearing up for a second half of the season that could, uh, could go very yeah. well, both of the Blue League and the Champions League. Yeah, for sure. I, I keep referencing, referencing last match was, which was, not great at all, but it's a, it was a, a learning a learning match, and I think our mindset today was just a lot better. And you know, there's so many matches to be played in the Plus Liga that, that anything could really happen. Yeah, but there are. I do think we understand that it, it's kind of crunch time, you know, for especially in the Champions League. And you know, we've talked about it. This game against Trento, it's it's do we have to win? No. Do we want to win? Yes. Like, do we know the situation of what's going on? Absolutely. So it's a weird. It's it's always a weird vibe, but. Anytime that you can be in a situation to improve as a team and to get better and to hopefully start some momentum, you got to take advantage. So we'll see. I mean, I think, you know, last game, Shlifka didn't play. So that's a big loss for us as well. But, yep. um, you know, he was back on the court today. So I'm excited. I think that we have all the potential in the world. We just got to figure figure our, our stuff out. I'll just say that. Yeah, that's a good summary kind of for this this whole discussion about, you know, posturing in groups and trying to manipulate where you end up in seeding in this in this newfangled Champions League bracket we're looking at, but like like we always like to say the games are played on the court, not on paper. The standings are are calculated based on guys playing on the court who want to win, who are professional athletes, who are competitors who want to go out there and put their best foot forward, just like Eric said earlier, even if the coach chooses to roll out sort of a second team, those guys have maybe even more to play for just individually. So there's so much going on here, and there's so much more for teams to want to accomplish in a match than just to line up in a certain spot in the bracket. Because like a team with Zox, like Zoxa, new guy, Bartosz Bednors, go out, put your best foot forward, get him in the mix, play great volleyball with a new piece and, you know, build some, some new identity and confidence in, in what you're looking like as a team momentum. these days. I think the momentum, I think the same goes for a team like Lube. hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I feel excited about where a team can go. You know, Bednarsh is, he's just a, a good, solid, high flying volleyball player. And some of the things that he can do out there are just, 
<laughs> insane to watch and what he can do and how he can block and how he can serve. So, like I said, you know, the puzzle pieces are there. We just got to put it together. All right. So, Eric, before we get you out of here, this has been an incredible show. Thank you so much for joining and yeah. giving us all your you insight. Know, I, love Let's... You know, I love it. I, I love being here. We're going to have to do a we... national team show at some point. Oh, you better believe we will. When uh, we're so to, to talk about that, I mean, yeah. we're, we're going to be in Ottawa again, like we were last year. And yeah. it's great that Team USA is going to be there this year and not like they were last year we're also going to try and be in anaheim so oh, we'll, nice. we'll be seeing you we'll be seeing you guys a lot we can we can do some of this stuff in person yeah, which would be even better would be awesome. uh so let's let's look one more time at the schedule of matches for wednesday for mm-hmm. wednesday for champions league before we kind of wrap things up and get out of here hawk bank versus hay bar is first thing in the in the morning for us north americans it's and that match doesn't really influence anything else but it is important, as, as we figured out over yeah. the course of this show, it is important for Hawk Bank to win so that they guarantee themselves to win their pool. I don't know then, why I felt that. I can't believe I – that was a pretty gross error that we had there. I, I, it, I, it's just showing everyone that you're not watching uh, You Can't Handle the Heat, the Out of System Boys <laughs> podcast, because Mike Ama uh, definitely it discussed the scenario in in that episode. Uh, that, that I mean, I missed it too, and I watched and I watched their show, so I just, I just <laughs> don't know how to do math. I, I Again, I, I I keep making fun of myself for getting two engineering degrees and not being able to do basic math about sports standings. <laughs> All right, so Hawk Bank, if if they they beat Haybar, they win Pool B. Then all eyes are on JW versus Friedrichshafen. Yeah. It, it, it will kind of change everything if JW wins three zero or basically any other result happens that will change some things it's it's too bad the commentator for that is gonna be bad yeah yeah they, they, they put a joke of a commentator on that game i, I, I highly suggest everyone watches that one on mute uh, <laughs> Zerot bank versus lubiana big one for them head to head if if zero bank That's takes three yeah. if Zerot bank takes three points they they get second in group e if lubiana takes a point they get second in group b but otherwise it doesn't really affect standings that much montpellier versus novi sad doesn't matter at all Berlin versus Xavier Che matters a lot. A lot. Huge a lot. match in Berlin. Lube versus Rusolari actually matters a lot. Quite a bit, yeah. Only if Rusolari wins. If Lube wins, it doesn't really matter. If Rusolari wins, it makes that third place situation crazy. Tours yeah. versus Benfica, kind of the same thing. We expect Tour to win. If they don't, then uh, then it basically gives either Berlin or Xavier Che the loser that third place spot for free. Zoxa versus Trentino, big one, but both teams advance. Both both teams are already in, so nobody's like tournament is on the line. But Trentino so could maybe. It's so funny when you're playing in a game like you don't think it's interesting. Like you're always aware <laughs> of what the interesting matches are, but I don't know. I mean, I I understand it's a big game, it's interesting, but like I don't know some of these other games. I'm a little bit at this point more excited about. <laughs> yeah, it's it's because there's well, yeah, it's because there's more on the line. Like Trentino yeah. and Zaxa is a is a phenomenally good match between two very good teams, but both of you are moving on, which is why the 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 intrigue isn't quite there the way it is for some of the other ones. Speaking of games that are not interesting, Menon versus Carlo Varsco, don't bother. Yeah. And then Perugia versus Duran. It <laughs> the only way that would be interesting is if Perugia drops a set. Yeah, that's the you other know, way, which I, I mean, I could see happen. I, maybe I maybe give there just it. goes off, you know, I don't the Chilean it. lefty. But that's the only way that I could see anything, anything happen. Yeah. But uh, so that's it. Ten games, ten games. A couple of them are overwhelmingly meaningful. And on Wednesday night, we will know the bracket. Yeah. We will know the eleven teams that advance. We will know the matchups. I'm not sure if we'll know the schedule, but we'll at least know who's playing who in those two match series to kind of open up that 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 play in round where this the second place teams and the third place teams are going at it though and no matter what those series are going to be extremely good yeah i agree i think i might actually go live uh just to like like i have like kind of like a like a, a watch like what was it what's what, a watch along yeah sure and just kind of like talk yeah. through the standings as they're happening yeah, and, i think and, that's a really good idea so and then because the, that jw friedrich is basically the first meaningful game and yeah. then if you want you could just jump in with me after after that and, and, and do the other ones yeah, after I'm done calling Hoffen versus JSW, I'll I'll hop on and kind of watch the rest with you. I think that would be really fun. Yeah, because especially like breaking down, like if if it's like once we get to the nitty gritty of that schedule, like if it starts going that way, things could be really interesting, really interesting. And I think it'd just be fun to fun to chat about. So if you guys are 
want to watch along and don't want to listen to Rob call uh, JW <laughs> against Friedrich, Friedrich Schaffen, uh, then come uh, come hang out with us. Might, might, maybe do members or not. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure, we'll figure it out. We absolutely should watch the game and listen to Rob commentate. Aw, thanks, yes, You should. Yes. You should. And provide nice feedback and support our, our people. Yeah. Out there. I've got I've got some I've got some pronunciation research to do on those two teams. Even like like Hoffen, I think Hoffen has zero Germans in their starting lineup. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, right? Andre Brown and Nadelkovich in the middle, Vicentin and Stern on the left, Superlock on the right, Vincent Setting and Hurricane Blair Ban at Bro. No, right? No. Yeah, Hurricane, Hurricane Ban. <laughs> <laughs> so and then like so that's a very international team but I, I gotta i gotta nail down some of my polish pronunciations for well, I'll, I'll give you super lock so it's not super, super lock. lock thank super you lock. thank you thank you i think that i'm an expert in polish which i'm absolutely not but i'll give you <laughs> i mean yeah living living amongst the, that language all the time would be would be fascinating to the ears to figure out some of the noises that are made in that language. Yeah. I'm I'm interested well, in that as well. You got the easiest Polish name out there in for now for Yep, obviously. love that one. Kleveno Toniuti, I can do that one. Gladder, I can do Glad, uh, yeah. Glad, is it Gladder? Gladier? No, Gladder, Gladder, you're okay. I think then. it's Gladder. And then Vizhnevsky's out, although I, I I know how to do that one. Uh Mbaye is their new middle blocker Gladier. character. Uh, Popivchak, yeah. I've got, I've got that one. Boye, I've got that one. So maybe it's not. I'll, I'll give you it. I'll give you that. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's a show. That was awesome stuff. Uh, all these things that we talked about might come into play. They might not. It'll all be decided on yeah. Wednesday. As, as none all... of it could happen. Like none right, of it. yeah. The, the... It's a chance we just totally wasted an hour and a half of everyone's time. No, I'm kidding. Everybody. The... Hopefully everyone enjoys the show. Uh, Eric, thank you again for joining yeah, me. It's awesome, to, awesome yeah. to have you. Good luck this week. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching you guys versus Trento, and I'm looking forward to watch the watching the rest of the chaos in Week 6 uh, Champions League. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then real quick, guys, make sure to head over to thatvolleyball.store to pick out your pick up your spicy volleyball gear. Um, and oh, I've got the asset. Look oh, at look at that. Look at that. Uh, go, ch- go check that out. Or actually, I guess I got to go make the uh, the sale. Yeah, got to go set up the sale. We, Eric, we just hit uh, ten thousand YouTube subscribers and one thousand people in our Discord channel, and so we're going to celebrate nice. by giving people a little discount on that volleyball store. I would like a discount. Okay, done. Well, well we could, we could easily do that. We'll, we'll DM you a, a discount done. on uh, uh, after. Consider it done. All right, Perfect. Eric. Good luck this week, uh, everyone else. Thanks, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're interested in NCAA ball, great. We'll be live again tonight. Uh, similar to what we did last night, uh, courtside from this uh, this event in Austin. We've got uh, Lewis versus Pep today and then Stanford versus Penn State, which is going to be a really, really good match. I'm sure, Eric, you'll catch up on it tomorrow. Oh, when you wake up. Yeah. Yes, I'll, yeah. be, and, I'll be tuning in in the morning. Yeah, and then for our Discord members, we might be going be going live again later tonight, too. Oh, my God, are we going to do that again? I, I, don't know well. if, I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Uh, thanks, Eric. Great to yes. have you. Thanks, thanks everyone, guys. for watching. We'll, yeah, have a good day. We'll see you guys. Yeah, you too. We'll see you guys tonight live from, from Austin. Good luck. We'll be cheering for you. Thanks. Bye.